Salutations, my name is Summer and this is Cozy Reading with Quaker Cats and I wanted to talk to you guys uh, today about what I've read and what I'm currently reading. I do have little Prim here on my lap. She's, I don't know, well, she's, she's awake. Um, anyway, so there's everything I talk about I'll put in the description down below because some of them are ebooks and I don't know how to show you guys. I don't do any editing or anything. So um, anyway, two things for the African Cup. One I finished, one I'm currently working on. I got Equatorial Guinea. I didn't know anything about the country. Um, now I know a little bit more, <laughs> but still not much. Um, anyway, I read La, La Bastarda uh, by Trifonia Melabia Obono. And, uh, yeah, it was about a 17-year-old girl who lives in Equatorial Guinea. And she um, is considered a bastard because her father didn't pay the bride price. And um, her mother died when she was young. So she was raised by her grandparents who are very... They're from the Fang tribe and they're very superstitious. And anyway, she... Um, you know, at 17, she learns about her sexuality and the traditions of what she's supposed to do and um you know it's very short it's only 58 pages an ebook so anyway i really enjoyed it uh, i feel like as a novel it might have been too much um you know when there's all that struggle going on but that was very good so the other thing i um so equatorial guinea lost to ivory coast and so for Ivory Coast, the book I have got through ebook, and I actually ordered the physical book because it's so good. Um, it's nonfiction. It's called A Gazelle Ate My Homework by Habib Fanny. And uh, yeah, I'm really enjoying it. Hopefully my next video, I'll be holding up a physical copy of it and telling you my thoughts about it because I have just started it. And it's really good so far. So I have a about a week to read that before Equatorial Guinea plays against somebody else and I forget who it is because I don't follow sports so anyway but I'll link Mark's channel down below he's the one hosting uh, so something I finished was When Less Becomes More by Emily Lay this book was exactly what I needed um, she talks about slowing down um, figuring out our, our priorities. Sometimes, you know, we have so much coming at us. And that's one thing she said, you know, 20 years ago, we didn't have all of this trying to get our attention, figuring out our priorities. Um, and yeah, sometimes all these things that we think are important really aren't and figuring out what is important to us, what really does matter. Because it's easy to get caught up in all these things that don't matter and they don't need our attention or time. So this was a little religious, uh, she's Christian, but I didn't feel like it was pushy or, um, you know, I didn't feel like it was overwhelming or anything. I, uh, I really enjoyed it. It was, like I said, it was just what I needed. Another book that I finished that I loved uh, was The Castle of the Kings by Oliver Hotch. I don't know how to pronounce his last name. Uh, he's German. And this is historical fiction about Germany, 1524. Uh, we have Agnes and Mathis. And I don't think you say Mathis. I, how I read it is Mathis, but it's probably pronounced a different way. Um, Anyway, so he was raised, their child, they were childhood friends, now they're 18 or so, becoming adults. And uh, anyway, so Mathis, his father was a worker, and Agnes's father uh, was one of the overlords, and this is during a peasant's war. So, yeah, there's a lot of conflict with Agnes, with her father being one of them, and and how 
people are being treated and starving and all that kind of stuff. Um, fantastic book. Uh, there's also a mystery that I loved. Now, I did not enjoy uh, The Name of the Rose but uh, by Umberto Eco. But I had some kind of the same vibes as that in this, but I absolutely love this. Like, they, he did it right. <laughs> I know so many people who love The Name of the Rose are going to say, but he did the mystery right in this book. So, anyway. Uh, the last thing I finished was Billy Summers by Stephen King. Uh, Billy Summers is a hitman. We learn about... Uh, the whole book is kind of like about this hit, this uh, job he's taken, but it goes back and you learn about his childhood and relationships and, and all that kind of stuff. And the thing that I really appreciated about this book, and if Stephen King turns you off because of the supernatural, there isn't any supernatural in here. Um, this is all like real life, this could happen type deal. Absolutely loved it. I also love that there are some, I don't know, some people call them Easter eggs, you know, there are some mentions of things that were in his other books. Uh, actually, I think one thing was mentioned three different times, so there's no way you could miss it. It's, uh, get, it's closer to the end. And I love how Stephen King is always talking about novels and different authors. So I have a list um, after I finish one of his books, usually. Anyway, I thought it was wonderful. So, um, things that I'm working on. I have two books for a booktube spin because he, um, you know, he did it twice. So, Executing Grace by Shane Claiborne. It says, How the Death Penalty Killed Jesus and Why It's Killing Us. Um... I read Irresistible Revolution by him. I actually got to meet him so uh, and hear him speak, which was wonderful. He has such of like an open heart, just an open mind, very loving person. Um, so yeah, anytime I get a chance to read something by him, I, I always learn something. He, you know, sometimes I think I have my mind set on something. And then I'll read something of his, and I'll be like, oh, he's changed my mind again. So anyway, I am Quaker, so I am against the death penalty, which um, it can be a totally different video, but I won't be the one making it. <laughs> so I'm not going to get on that subject. Um, the other book that was picked was The Lucky Ones by Jenny Brown, My Passionate Fight for Farm Animals. And so, you know, I have not been walking my talk when it comes to uh, eating healthy, not eating any meat. Um, when I was 12, I was like a diehard, strict vegetarian, all up into my 20s. I actually was vegan for a while, and I've played with veganism off and on throughout my whole life, um, but I've lost track, I've lost track, that's not the right way to say it, but I've gotten off course, I guess, with what I believe in and what I think is right and everything, so hopefully reading that will put me back on the right track, and I mean the same with the environment, you know, there's so many things I think of that I, I do that harms the environment and I think about you know what I could be doing to make the world a better place so and I think those things are just so important for us to constant we're constantly reminded about all this stuff it doesn't matter I feel like we need to be reminded about the things that do matter so anyway two things that I'm currently reading the Bastard by John Jakes. I know it's weird. It's like La Bastarda and The Bastard. I don't know. <laughs> it, just, it just happened this month. Anyway, um, I'm only on page 306 out of 600 and some. What's the afterward? 634. So 
I'm almost, almost halfway. And then the last thing I want to talk about is Rhythm of War by Brandon Sanderson. I have picked this back up finally. I was reading this last year. This is the fourth book in the Stormlight Archive. And I read all of the books, like, one right after another. And they're all huge like this. Um, but yeah, I re I reread Way of Kings. And then I listened to Words of Radiance on audiobook and loved it. And then I read Oathbringer. And then I read the novella Edge Dancer. And I just just flew through those. And then I got to this one. For some reason, I have been... The cat's underneath the door. Some, For some reason, I've been, like, slogging through this. So, um, I finally... I have 200 pages left, and now I'm, like, hooked. Finally, I'm hooked. But I think it has to do with my mood, and it is... It, last year was a tough year. So, anyway, yeah. I'm on page 1060, and I think I have, like, 200 pages left. And these editions are gorgeous. Um... I forget the names, like Gollum's editions, but there's all these beautiful pictures. Watch me now not be able to find any. You know how that goes. But there's all these really neat pictures. Now, I do not agree with the illustrations. Um, there's times when they'll be describing uh, something to me and I'll be like, that's not right. That's not how they look. So, um, so I have disagreed with them, but they're beautiful. I mean, they're, they're really nice. So anyway, hopefully next time I talk to you guys, I will have finished this. It's a heavy, it's a heavy one. So anyway, uh, it's still snowing here. Uh, is it snowing or cold where you guys are? And, uh, let me know if you have any thoughts about any of these books. If you, um, and what are you guys reading right now? I have a cat trying to bang down the door to get in here. I'm guessing it's Sterling. Who has been playing with everybody? Or it's, it's probably Rolo. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I see Prim. Prim is just cleaning. I'm surprised she's not sleeping. Anyway, thanks so much for watching, guys. Bye.